So today we're going to make a, a, a non-functioning but very basic login. Uh, and I'm going to try and make this a self-referential sticky form so that it incorporates pretty much everything we've done up to the semester. And the only thing that it's not going to do is check itself against a database. We're going to kind of fudge that part of it because we're not quite there yet. So anyway, in order to do this, the first thing I'm going to need is a pretty simple form. I'm dropping a form tag. I need a username field and then a password field. I'm going to go ahead and put a little checkbox for remember me. And finally, just a little button to make the thing activate. And that button should say plug in. Uh, then the last thing I'll do to my HTML portion of this is I'm going to make the form uh, the form action refer back to itself. So when they click submit, it submits back to same page. Here's my code. That'll make the cookie, and then if the username and password match against the what we, if we validate them against the, the username and password that we set up, um, then it'll create the sessions. This might actually be easier to copy down in design view. Yeah. Just hit the buttons for oh this password one. I should probably make that a password field. Now no one can actually see it. Little checkbox, little button. I guess the only other thing that you usually have in a uh, login field is something like this: forgot password. I'll just turn that into a link to nothing. This is the common elements in a uh, login form. All right. Um, I'm going to move on to the next step where we actually start making the, the PHP code happen. And all of this is going to have to be done in code view. So the form is going to submit back to itself. So I need PHP if post. I need to set up a bunch of variables, but only if the form has actually been submitted. If the form hasn't been submitted, I don't want the computer to do anything. So I put this in a nice little if statement that will only run if they've actually hit the login button. And then I'll simply declare all the variables that I need. I'm going to have a username, a password, and a remember. Those are all the same length. Name equal remember. And the only thing I forgot to do with this is the, the remember. In order for it to actually submit something to this variable that I'm trying to create up here, it has to have a value. So I'm going to set a value equal to just the letter Y. So I'm not sending that much information. And now when that is submitted with the remember is if they check it, then this variable remember will end up being the letter Y. Otherwise it will be nothing. It will simply just have a null value. 
underscore post. How does this, how does this work? Actually, before I do that. So I need to do the post for each of these user name password remember now at this point I've also made an assumption I've assumed that they're going to have clicked login and they filled out all three of these items there's also the possibility that they completely screwed up and they accidentally hit login. Uh, they didn't realize their cursor wasn't blinking in and they just hit it anyway. Um, so I need to take care of that possibility as well. If they didn't, damn it, that was this. To make these truly um, validated, if is set. post username and I sorry this is all let me put this on two lines there we go if username is set then the variable username will be equal to what comes through the post I know that adds a little bit to it but we have to do that for each one to make sure that they've been set properly I'll do that for all three. And put them in curly braces. There we go. So again, I'm checking to make sure, did they actually fill it out? If not, then username is equal, or if they did, then username is equal to what this is. Um, Otherwise, that username variable will not be created. Okay. So that was... Clearing my variables. Very. I remember how to spell variables. There we go. That's okay. Then I can come down here and I can actually start to, to validate each of these variables. For username and password, it's probably just going to be a minimum number of characters we can validate against. Um, and that's all that we need to, to make sure is there, right? Because the, the remember is actually completely arbitrary. They don't have to fill that one out. So we declare username check equals false username I'm sorry password check equals false and since remember only has one possible value yeah we really don't need to worry about setting it to false because if they don't fill it out that's okay they don't have to click that checkbox. They can get away with not checking it. So I'm just going to leave that one alone. Um, and the only real validation I'm going to do on this part right now is if the string length of username is greater than or equal to 8. 
then that's the validation. That'll pass my validation. I can set that check equal to true. I can actually do the exact same oops, come back here, for password. I would like to do actually one more to check about and see what remember is doing. If remember equals what did I set it to? Y? Yeah. Then we'll do remember check equals true. Um, so I declared some of these variables that got nice little if statements on them. The username seems to be working. Um, we'll check and see what's going on here. I can do one last overall um, check if username check and if and password check. If those end up e being equal to true, then we've passed all the validation. Then check equal true. Oop, I forgot a semicolon up here. So this is my overall check. If the if the user got through and they did eight characters for username, eight characters for password, then everything checks out. We've got our nice little flag that says, hey, ding, you get a gold star, you passed everything. Um, now, it actually isn't the only um, check that we need to run. Because at this point, they could type the letters or the numbers one through eight for both their username and password, and it would just let them in. Yay, they did it right, because that's the only check that we really have. The next level of this check is going to be to make sure that username and password, if username equals the username that we set up, so I'm just going to do my username, if username equals STMAR, and that's actually, whoops, I'm doing that wrong. That shouldn't be a separate if statement. That should actually be part of the string length check. Not this. So you can see I'm checking is the string uh, is the username eight characters and does it match the exact username that's required to log into this website? I need to do the exact same thing for the password. And this isn't going to work because my password is not eight letters. Or my username isn't eight, two, four, six, and seven. So I'll just change that. That would be easier than coming up with something new. My password would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same as my luggage. Some of you may get that. I got it. <laughs> So in addition to all of the, the stuff that I had before, now I've got, I, I know exactly what my username and password is supposed to be in order to log in. Um, at this point, I've got enough guts of this to test it out and see what is probably going to be broken. There should be a couple of instances where this still doesn't quite work. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and preview this. Um, I don't know if XAMPP is running. It is. Good. Rebooting Firefox. Let's see if it runs at all. Okay, good. And I'll do some more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Log remember me doesn't do too much yet. Undefined variable remember on line 22. I didn't fill it out, so <coughs> it's it's giving me problems with it. You didn't make remember check. You didn't set that variable. Okay. That would definitely help. I think it's actually remember that's flipping out. Let me try it again. Go back to the beginning. Still doesn't like it. And it's undefined variable remember. And I know why it's happening. When it gets down to here, if I haven't filled out remember, this one doesn't do it. It doesn't create remember. Um, that can actually, that might actually end up happening if you just click login. It's not going to, oh, seems to be okay with username and password on lines 23. Yeah. So this remember me down here, I'm going to need to add an is set to it. Um, If remember has been set and it's equal to the letter Y, then we'll check set remember check to, to true. Otherwise, that won't run. So let me try it now. If I just go through and refresh the page, if I just click login, good. This is what I want to have. If this goes through, then nothing actually worked. But now I should be able to type in even though wrong thing or the right thing. Okay, I'm not getting errors now. It is jumping to the next page, but I'm not getting strange little errors on things. Now, I got a couple of possibilities for things that should be happening here. Um, I'm going to need to set all the sessions and cookie stuff, um, but I'm also going to need to come down into my form and actually put in the values, because right now the form is not sticky. If I, You notice that if I type something in and I hit login, whether it's true or not, it goes away. So if the, if the, if it doesn't pass the user check, then it's going to have to, for all of my inputs, I'm going to have to do value equals, and in double quotes, I have to put a giant big PHP block. If underscore post, I know this is getting complicated. Oh, that's wrong. Uh, if is set. then I'll let's see if I can space this out so it looks a little bit nicer too. So in each of these inputs, I'm going to have to ask if, if that post has been set, and if it has, I'm going to echo the value out of it. I'm going to do the exact same thing for, uh, we don't want to do password, do we? That would be bad, because that would actually print it in the HTML code, and it's possible that somebody could come along and look at the code, and maybe their password was correct, and they would get that password. So we're just going to leave password alone. But remember me, the way that that's done is um, in HTML5, you just put, oop, not label. Where is that? There it is. If you want that button checked, then you just put in the word checked as an attribute. It does not get a value in the HTML. 
Uh, so what I need to do here is I, I need this check, the word check to be actually be um, dynamic. It needs to be in an if statement. And it requires a little bit of PHP here. PHP if post uh, that's got to do the is set thing if post remember is set and it's equal to yes or y remember equal y then all I really want to do is echo the word checked I've got everything that needs to end this. Yeah. Let me see if I can organize this a bit. easier to see what's going on. Okay. Uh, so I need to test that out. I don't know if I broke something yet. So in this instance, I'm going to type in my username, and I'm going to forget my password. Actually, I'm going to check Remember Me as well. If I click Login, nothing should happen. It should look like nothing happens. That's good, because that actually means it's submitted to the next page. I failed the validation, which is what I was just trying to test out, and it left the information, the things that I had checked, stayed checked. And I just need to test it again with each of these things missing. Cool. The only thing I don't like about it at this point is that the it doesn't tell me if, you, if I screwed up, if I forget something. So I'm just going to do a little thing like this, PHP if check if oh, what are we going to put in here? A little, uh, Span class equal error. Something's wrong. Close that span. Sure. Uh, top or bottom? This block right here is all inside the input checkbox. I'm just asking if post remember has been set and if it's equal to Y, then just spit out the word checked and the computer knows that the previous time they had it checked and now they got to check it again. And remember, I'm recording this so you guys don't have to have everything done right now. You can actually watch this later. I'm video recording the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, so a nice little statement should pop up. So if I click login, ha ha, something's wrong. Good. Now they, they know, and I can write a little CSS that does something for that. I'll do that later. Um, now, the whole session thing. That's the whole guts of this, the whole purpose of this is to try and set the sessions and the cookies for all of this stuff. Um, the first thing that you absolutely have to have is if not Ooh, wait a minute I'm going to have the wrong thing up here before you can use sessions you've got to have them started um, I need to find one real quick hold on
if not is set underscore oops I think we could be in session the exclamation point means not so whenever you're dealing with true falses if you just add an exclamation point to anything it just becomes the opposite of whatever it is so this I just asked has sessions not been started if so if that is true session underscore start semicolon I need I missed parentheses there there should be two there two rights and two lefts there we go you got it Now what I want to do is I want the sessions to be created if they pass the validation. If all of that worked out the way it was supposed to, then we should start the session and we should set the session equal to their username. Um, so I think this actually needs to be in a bigger if statement. If check is equal to true then we'll start the session they passed all the validation and all that good stuff I need another parenthesis or closing block down there does anybody remember how to start sessions No, we've done that part. I'm sorry, how do, you, how do you set a session? Sessions were the easy ones. Dollar underscore session. That's it. You just say session username as a super global set it equal to whatever you want so in this instance I did check to make sure that it's the right username I've already done that we have made them jump through that hoop this assumes that we've gotten to the point where we say yes they made it um, so we're just gonna whatever it is they typed in that's gonna become the value of our session let me take a look real quick Something's still wrong. Did you have to turn on sessions on the top? I did it here. Um, as long as no HTML has been sent, so none of these echo anything, um, and there's no space before my one, so it's okay to do it down here. And I really don't want to start them until all the validation stuff has been set. Um, No, but there do have to be the parentheses. 
that's how PHP understands that it is it is a function that it's supposed to run and not a constant or a variable or something. I'm not sure where it is either. Yeah, absolutely, I will. Yeah, I can print this for you. Okay, so in this next part, this should still work. Um, I want to check if they did the remember, if they checked remember, then we need to create a cookie for them. And the way that'll work is if uh, wait, I'm doing this wrong. If remember check, we did that, right? Remember check, yes. If remember check equals true Actually, want to do one more thing, and remember equals y. I just want to sort of double up, check that because it is entirely possible for you to create a form on your website that links to a, a form processor on somebody else's website, and they'll process your information. So at least this way, they have to put the right code in there if they want to go to that length. Um, then I need to start setting cookies. Set cookie. is going to be username and then it'll have a value of username and it will have an expiration of time Does it need to be spaces in the thing? No. Those are actually arbitrary. Time plus 60 times 60 times 24 times 14. So that'll that cookie will set for two weeks. And it doesn't like something in there. Probably that I don't have a. Okay. That's it. Okay. I didn't have a semicolon at the end. They do not. If you don't put one, they will never expire. Is that frowned upon? Except when? Is that frowned upon? No. That's mostly how, especially the marketing ones, they, they usually never expire. Until you clear out your cache, then, then they'll go away. <coughs> Last so at this point, we're kind of in, in the section of code that assumes that they did it correctly. We have now created a session for them. We have created a nice little cookie for them if they so choose. Now we need to get them out of here. Um, header location will be uh, admin.php. Uh, no, it's actually a command by itself, um, a language construct, and it's typically done after a header. It's kind of redundant. It doesn't really, it, well, what it does is it just tells PHP stop running. Don't do anything else on this page. In all likelihood, header actually contains a, a, an exit function. There are certain instances where it will actually try to continue running what's left on the page. So at this point, just saying, okay, you're supposed to jump somewhere out. You're supposed to jump to this admin page that we'll create that'll just show us the, the value that's stored in the session and in the cookie. Um, and if you happen to go past this, just stop. Let me build this admin page for you real quick just to see if all of our stuff, if it actually works. Um, this will be admin.php. I need to go get that session start thing. What was? The session start. 
No, that was still in the head of my login. I had to have it in the head uh, before the head because you can't send any HTML. You can't send a single space into your HTML and have session still work. It's just that weird quirk thing. So wait, the session was called username, wasn't it? Equals session username. What did I set the cookie to? Okay, the cookie username is also set. Same way. this username s and username c I have no idea if this is going to work or not and all likelihood I've screwed up somewhere <laughs> This is the login system. So let me check and see if this is actually working, if I'm sending you on the right path. So if I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it should all be correct. I check remember me. I click login. Something's wrong. It doesn't pass. Okay, that means my admin, it's not even getting to admin. I still have a problem on the login somewhere. Oop, I didn't have it saved. Let me try it one more time. Blah. Now I'm having caching problems. All right, undefined variable on line 48. Time for debugging. Yeah. Oh, if check equals false. I never, I never created that anywhere. Yeah, so let me do that up here. I did it in the if post. So the first time you come to the page, it's never declared. So Yeah. Try that now. There we go. Okay. Now if I log in, something's still wrong. Spell that right. All right, still doesn't like it. Uh oh, that has an error. Uh, is that real? It was not real. Okay. Sorry, uh, Dreamweaver was giving me a red line here. I didn't see anything wrong. I closed it out. I brought login back up. It went away. Dreamweaver does that occasionally. I put it at the end of my validate ones. I did not. No, because check is just, it turns to true if all, if all the validations pass. It's just sort of the, the flag that I'm using to see if, if Validation worked. I, what do you have to code for the bottom where it says? Okay. Um, so I'm still not sure where my error is. Something's going wrong somewhere. Um, check is not getting set to true. So none of this session stuff is ever running because check does not get equal to true. So if username check and password check, 
70. I can guarantee that's a it's greater than or equal to 7. Four, five, six, seven. Mm. Isn't check being turned back off? The check equals false? Where? Up Why here? I'm starting at, as soon as I created, I set it equal to false. Then, on this line, line 25, I'm setting it back to true if these two pass, if these two are set to true. These come from, go check the username, go check the password, and they get set to true. The way this actually reads is, it's the shorthand for this if you just ask for a variable name. So what I'm thinking now is I need to echo some things along the way. Echo username. Yeah, I'm going to erase this here in a minute. But I need to see where it's screwing up along the way. says username's true, password's not true, and so check does not equal true either. So what doesn't it like about password? It is greater than or equal to 8 in my user... Oh! Ah! Do you see that? <laughs> I had... Uh, because I copied and pasted it from username, it was still checking to see if username was equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Blah! Okay, so now let's see if that runs. Guess not. Oh, it did. It took. It had to do it twice, I think, because of the cache. Excellent. That's good. And I didn't have remember me, so let me try that again. It is now coming through. Um, let me get rid of this diagnostic crap that I don't want anymore. Could be. Um, so I will print out the code for you guys so that you guys can go over and, and look at it. Um, but if you want to, you can always look back at this video. I'll have it up on YouTube in about an hour.